Are you getting ready to take the Parapro assessment? This is test code 1775. If this is a test that you need to pass, then I think I can help. My name is Matt Taylor, and I am a test prep expert with study.com. In this video, I am going to help you by walking you through the information that you need to know to feel confident and prepared on the exam day. We are going to review everything that is on the test, how to prepare, and five top tips so that you will be successful. Make sure to like and subscribe to Praxis Test Prep to see more videos with sample problems for Parapro and more test taking tips. Okay, let's get started. Welcome to Parapro Assessment Overview. This test is designed to evaluate the knowledge and skills essential for safe and effective entry-level practice as a paraprofessional in the educational system. You will answer questions from these three areas and in equal parts, reading, mathematics, and writing. Thus, each section is approximately one-third of the total examination with about 30 questions in each category. These three categories cover a total of 90 questions on the exam. Be sure to check out our channel for videos that go into a lot more detail for each topic and subtopic. In these videos, test prep experts review sample problems step by step, so you will have a better understanding of the types of questions you can expect to find on the actual exam. How many questions? There are 90 selected response questions, in other words, multiple choice questions. Some questions will have the possibility of one or more correct answers amongst the options. You can identify these by the phrase, select all that apply. And here is where I want to give you the first two of my top test taking tips, which are one, to read each question thoroughly, and two, to read through all answer options before making your final decision. The easiest way to make a careless mistake is to misread the question or choose the first answer that looks right. Make sure you thoroughly understand what is being asked and have considered each answer choice before selecting an answer. Here's an example. If you don't read all the answers first, you may choose A as it seems reasonable. The total available time is two and a half hours or 150 minutes. This means you have about 100 seconds or one minute and 40 seconds per question. And this is where I want to give you the third of my top tips, which is to aim for about 80 seconds per question, which will give you a small buffer for questions that may require more thought. Top tip number four, avoid overthinking questions you are unsure about. Move on so you don't lose time. You will be taking this test on a computer. You can sit the exam at a test taking center or at home with online proctoring. There may be some questions on the exam that will not be counted in your final score, but you won't know if the questions count or not. So just assume that every question counts. This brings me to my final top tip, which is to watch your time. The best way to ensure you stay on target is to do timed practice. This will help you get used to how long you have for each question. Let's break down what you can expect in each test category. The first category is reading. You will be required to answer questions focusing on various aspects of reading skills and knowledge. These questions may involve identifying the meanings of words and phrases within the context of reading a passage, as well as interpreting information presented in tables, diagrams, charts, and graphs. In addition to these, you will also encounter questions on the application of reading skills and knowledge to enhance classroom instruction. This includes understanding foundational concepts and tools essential for teaching. You may be asked about alphabetizing words, decoding words or phrases using syntax, and helping students effectively use a dictionary. Here's an example. The second category is mathematics. In this test, you will be assessed on a variety of mathematics skills and knowledge areas, including number sense and basic algebra, geometry and measurement, and data analysis. Within number sense and basic algebra, 
you might encounter questions that require you to recognize the relative positions of numbers, such as understanding that 5 eighths lies between 3 fifths and 7 tenths. Additionally, you may need to demonstrate the ability to represent time in multiple ways, for example, converting 45 minutes into 3 quarters of an hour. Geometry and measurement will test your ability to apply knowledge to geometric figures, calculate areas and volumes, and understand different units of measurement. Data analysis questions will focus on your capability to interpret and analyze data presented in tables, charts, and graphs. You might be provided with time-related data and asked to identify trends or make predictions based on the information given. Overall, this test aims to evaluate your proficiency in essential mathematical concepts and skills. Another important topic within the mathematics category is the application of mathematics skills and knowledge to support classroom instruction. This section will delve into how to effectively apply mathematical concepts and techniques in a classroom setting to enhance teaching and learning. You will explore various strategies for integrating math skills into instructional practices, such as using manipulatives and visual aids to clarify complex concepts, and incorporating real-world examples to make math more relatable and understandable for students. This topic aims to equip you with practical tools and methods to support and enrich classroom instruction, ensuring that students not only grasp mathematical theories, but also see their practical applications in everyday life. Here's an example. The third category is writing. In the section on writing skills and knowledge, you will be tested on your ability to identify basic grammatical errors in standard written English. This includes recognizing and correcting mistakes in sentence structure, punctuation, and usage. Additionally, you will answer questions related to identifying various parts of speech, such as nouns, verbs, pronouns, adjectives, adverbs, and prepositions. This section aims to assess your foundational understanding of English grammar and your ability to apply this knowledge to improve written communication. In the final section, titled Application of Writing Skills and Knowledge to Support Classroom Instruction, Foundations, and Tools, you will encounter questions designed to assess your ability to apply writing skills effectively in an educational setting. This section covers a range of topics, including identifying and utilizing appropriate reference materials to enhance writing accuracy and credibility. You will also be tested on your ability to draft and revise written content, ensuring clarity, coherence, and proper structure. Additionally, this section emphasizes writing for various purposes and audiences requiring you to demonstrate an understanding of how to adjust language and tone to suit different contexts. Even though this is the writing section, the questions are still all multiple choice, so you won't need to create original writing. Here's an example. That is a lot to cover. So how do you prepare? We recommend starting with a full length practice test. Study.com's test prep course offers several. In this way, you can identify your strengths and weaknesses, so you know where to focus the most time. Don't worry about your scores on these prep tests. They are simply for the purpose of finding out what you need to work on, so please don't feel discouraged. It's all part of the process, and on Study.com you will receive an individualized study plan just for you. If you do use other test prep methods, you will likely have to do the analysis of your practice tests manually. But watch study.com's lessons to review the topics in your study plan and do practice problems. I am personally a fan of flashcards, as they are versatile, portable, and most importantly, effective for exams like this one where there is a lot to memorize. My final tip for studying is really just two steps that you should repeat again and again review and practice, and review and practice. Here are some other Parapro exam advice that will help you prepare for exam day. Keep in mind the importance of understanding the test structure. Acquaint yourself with the format, question types, and content areas of the exam. Familiarity with these aspects will aid in managing your time efficiently during the test. 
Utilize the extensive resources available at study.com to engage in thorough practice as these materials are designed specifically for the exam and offer dependable preparation. Establish a study schedule. Organize your review sessions to ensure comprehensive preparation, dividing the material into manageable sections and setting a timeline to thoroughly go over each one. Additionally, concentrate on your weak points. Identify areas where you need improvement and allocate extra time to those subjects. The focused method can greatly enhance your overall performance. Engage in timed practice tests. Complete full-length exams under timed conditions to mimic the actual test environment. This will help you adjust to the pressure of timed scenarios. Make sure to stay updated on test day requirements. Be aware of what to bring and understand the regulations of the test center. Also, take care of your well-being. Ensure you are well-rested and well-fed on the day of the exam. Getting enough sleep, eating a healthy breakfast, and staying hydrated can significantly influence your performance. If you're looking for solid test prep in order to understand the skills and content on the exam, as well as the structure of the actual exam, then study.com offers an excellent ParaPro Assessment 1755 test prep course, and I highly recommend it. The course covers everything that I've summarized here, and it goes into far greater detail. This course is written and vetted by teachers and experts and includes short form videos for every relevant concept. Additionally, there is a bank of high quality practice questions with detailed answers included. Most importantly, there is a 92% pass rate for those who have completed the course. And with that said, I hope I was able to give you a good idea of the concepts and theories you can expect to find on the actual exam. If this video helped you, please check out some of the other videos in this and other series for more ParaPro test prep. Please like and subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button so you won't miss any new videos when they drop. If there are any specific tests or questions that you would like us to review, please let us know in the comments and we'll get to them as soon as possible. Finally, once you've passed ParaPro, please leave a note in the comments so that we can all celebrate your success.